It is now time for member statements. I just want to remind the House that when we're having member statements, to be mindful of the members that are speaking. The member from Eglinton Lawrence, please. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Last Thursday, I had the privilege of speaking at a joint celebration of Jewish and Filipino Heritage Months held by B'nai B'rith Canada and the Filipino Heritage Month Society. The event was held on June 1st to mark the transition from Jewish Heritage Month, which is held in May, and Filipino Heritage Month, which is held in June. Attendees included Philippines Ambassador to Canada, the former Philippine Ambassador to Israel, members of various levels of government, senators, and Erwin Kotler, who works to oppose anti-Semitism and human rights violations of all kinds. I gained new insight into the actions of former Filipino President Manuel L. Quezon, whose open-door policy in 1937 allowed 1,200 Jews who were fleeing the Holocaust to seek refuge in the Philippines, President Quezon made this historic decision at a time when Canada and other nation had, nations had closed their doors to Jewish refugees. Several speakers described, the Jewish described by the Jewish community um, uh, in the Jewish community in the Philippines they still have this Jewish community based on the ones that came during the Holocaust. This is a lesson to all of us of the importance of compassion and respect for others. My riding of Eglinton Lawrence is home to a large Jewish and Filipino community, and the event celebrated their joint heritage and emphasis on family, community, faith. So let me say Mabuhai Shalom to all celebrating Jewish Heritage Month, which has just passed, and Filipino Heritage Month, which is coming. Member statements. And Catherine's. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today with a singular message of love and support for all of our 2SLGBTQ plus community. Deeply disturbed by the recent surge in hate crimes and messages of intolerance. During Pride Month, schools in Niagara and Pride Flags have become a target of intolerance. Trustees have used hate language and bigotry has been spray painted on our schools. We must protect our queer and trans youth, fostering safe spaces for them to thrive. Here's the message. You are safe. You are loved. We'll do everything in our power to make that clear. However, when reaching out to the advocates and the community, they express that words are not enough. We need action. It is no longer enough for politicians in the month of June just to condemn violence with words only. They are right. It needs to be every month, and it needs to be with action. I'm a, I am proud to be part of a caucus with the member of Toronto Centre that has demanded actions, not only words of cond condemnation. Today, let us remember when we are calling on the minister under the Education Act to use a variety of powers to promote safe and inclusion with the rise of hate. Prejudice has no home in Niagara. To my 2SLGBTQ plus community in Niagara, you have my unwavering support. However, more than that, my commitment to action, action for an inclusive, safe. A member from Burlington. Good morning, Speaker. I'd like to start my member statement today by welcoming three paramedics from Halton Paramedic Services who are with us today in the members gallery. Tom Sterling, Deputy Chief and Manager of Operations, Cassandra Lee, and Marley Weinerman. Recently, <laughs> recently, I had the pleasure of attending Halton Region's Paramedic Day. Each year, Halton Paramedic Services responds to over 55,000 calls and transports 35,000 patients through 15 strategically placed ambulance stations. Paramedics are truly unsung heroes in times of crisis, making split-second decisions that can save lives. They are often the first to arrive at the scene, risking their own safety to provide immediate care to those in need. In recognition of their bravery, the Ontario government recently introduced the Ontario Medal for Paramedic Bravery to recognize paramedics who have demonstrated great bravery in the line of duty. Recognizing the importance of paramedics in our healthcare system, our government recently expanded the Learn and Stay grant to include paramedic programs in priority communities. 
Eligible students will now receive full upfront funding for tuition, books, and other direct educational costs in return for working and caring for people in the region where they studied for a term of service after they graduate. Thank you to all paramedics for your service, and thank you to Halton Paramedic Services for coming out today. Member from Toronto, Danton. Speaker, Speaker, there are a lot of questions for the Minister of Education. His ministry is responsible for TVO, which has done high-quality programming work for years on public affairs and children's programming. In the last four years, funding to TVO has been frozen or dropped, while inflation has relentlessly driven costs upwards. The budget for content and programming at TVO dropped by well over 10 percent between 2021 and 2022. And this year's estimates for the Minister of Education are certainly nothing to be happy about. I have to ask, why is the Minister, why is TVO management trying to starve TVO programming? Because, Speaker, TVO public affairs programming, children's programming, are literally award winners in this country. And yet, both the Minister and TVO management seem to be committed to slowly, maybe not so slowly, making it more and more difficult for programming to be made here in Ontario. What do they have against high-quality programming being made in this province? Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Brantford Brant. Thank you, Speaker. As we all know, June is Aboriginal History Month, and it is my pleasure to rise in the House today and talk about an amazing event that will be happening in my riding of Brantford Brant from July 21st to the 23rd, the 43rd annual Champion of Champions Powwow. This event began as an idea back in 1979 when a group of dancers who had been performing at powwows throughout Ontario thought how wonderful it would be to be able to have their very own competition at home. In 1980, with tremendous support from the community, the first ever Champion of Champions Powwows was held on the Six Nations of the Grand River Territory. Over the years, the powwow has become a major tourist attraction locally, nationally, and internationally. With over 30 categories to compete in, there is something for everyone to enjoy. Not only can you be treated to exceptional traditional dancing and drumming, you can also find over 100 craft vendors selling jewelry, moccasins, shirts, and many other unique items only found in this region. The best path speaker to true reconciliation with Ontario's First Nations is to spend time sharing in the cultural experience and warmth of the Haudenosaunee people. So, if you are looking for a family-friendly, engaging activity, why not head over to 1987 Chiefs Wood Road, Oshweekin, from July 21st to the 23rd. You will love it. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. After 30 years of service, Denise Arkell is celebrating her retirement from the role as Executive Director at Neighbour to Neighbour in our community of Hamilton Mountain. Today, I want to take a moment to recognize Denise and to tell you more about her because she truly is a pillar of Hamilton community and she has made a lasting impact. Denise is a person who never stops. She is the kind of person who works tirelessly, day in and day out, so she can help support people and meet the needs in our community where they are. When Denise started back in 1993, Neighbour to Neighbour was serving around 600 households a month. Now they are serving 1,400 households each and every month. Her passion and her drive led her to expanding the various programs at Neighbour to Neighbour because Denise has consistently recognized the needs of where she sees it. I have known Denise for several years, and I am truly honoured to call her a friend. I have been lucky enough to work with her on several projects, including Coldest Night of the Year. If you've ever participated in this event in Hamilton Mountain, chances are you've met Denise. In true fashion, she works too hard to lead this event each and every year to support people in need in our community. 
Our community has been positively influenced by Denise's work, and her efforts have created a living legacy that has spread across Hamilton. Denise, I want to say thank you for everything. I am a better person for knowing you. You've inspired me each and every day for the hard work we do in our community. Enjoy your well-deserved retirement. While this is an end to one area, I know this is the beginning of a beautiful chapter for you. Congratulations. Member statements. The member for Glengarry Prescott Russell. Thank you, Speaker. Several colleagues have mentioned this during the last days. It's been a year since we've been elected to represent the citizens of Ontario. I want to thank my citizen, the citizens of my riding for their trust, and I want to ensure them that I will continue to represent them to the best of my will. During summer recess, we will appreciate the time to think of them, I hope. I can take this chance to also wish a good summer to my colleagues, and I invite you to my riding to participate from several events and meet the businesses, the people, and to spend more time with family also. There are different events that we can all profit from and celebrate in different communities, of uh, festivals, and these events. These summer events are already taking place at my riding and throughout the province. And I can tell you that people are very happy to participate at these events. To me, next month will be the best and also extraordinary occasions to meet up with citizens and to exchange what government has been doing to improve their lives. I'm happy to encounter my representative. Thank you. The member for Algoma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Speaker. Today I want to recognize champions from Algoma, Manitoulin. So let's get ready to rumble. The Manitoulin Secondary School Robotics Team not only took Two Dean's List semifinalists, the North Bay Event Engineering Inspiration Award, the McMaster Event First Impact Award, the Provincial First Impact Award. They delivered a knockout blow, winning the Robotics World Championships First Impact Award in Houston, Texas with their robot Bumblebee. The Impact Award is the most prestigious award that a team can win, which best embodies the goals and ideals of the competition. Because of their outstanding performance, they have qualified to compete again at the 2024 Championships. Manitoulin Medal 6865 stood out amongst the 630 teams because of their focus on sustainability and their work to becoming carbon neutral. Stepping into the ring, Ben Willis, Jocelyn Kunsi, Nevea Harper, Alexei McVeigh, Samuel Penning, Zavi Mara, Ryan Kunsi, Addie Gray, Alex Wilson, Deagle, Robin Allen, Ashlyn McNaughton, Daphne Carr, Garrett Charbonneau, Patrick McCain, and Alec Wilkin. I want to congratulate all the students, educators, and parents who went out to the competitions, as well as thank the over 300 Manitoulin sponsors, businesses, residents, supporters, and students that made it possible for them to compete. Speaker, be sustainable. 6865 Bumblebee, logging out. Thank you very much. Order. Order. Member statements. The member for Peterborough Kawartha. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's going to be difficult following that. One of the great things about being an MPP is we have the opportunity to be part of some truly great celebrations, and this past week was one of those opportunities for me. Lions International has a motto of, we serve. It's estimated that each lion makes the difference in 70 people's lives each year that they serve. 
the Havelock Lions just celebrated their 65th year of service, which in itself is an accomplishment. But, Speaker, there's one individual lion I have to center out. Alfred Charles Cooper, commonly referred to as Al, was one of the charter member members of the Havelock Lions Club way back in 1958. For 65 years, ELF has been serving his community. The lives of 4,550 people have been made better by the things that ELF has done for his community. Here, here. I've known ELF for longer than I've been in the MPP, and ELF has reminded me on many times that Lions are not political. Although he welcomes me volunteering at Lions events, I can't even wear a blue T-shirt. And if I do, he hands me a yellow Lions vest to put on over top of it. Integrity and service have defined ELF's actions as a lion for 65 years. Thank you for your service, ELF. The world is a much better place because of the service you have given. Here, here. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Barry Innisfil. Thank you, Speaker. In September 2021, I was pleased to announce a 100,000 Community Building Fund grant for the Barry Trojan Swim Team. The grant was used to help the club with staff salaries to support success through and beyond a pandemic rebuild. Funds from the grant also contributed to direct, uh, directly towards the club's ability to continue offering quality programming for local athletes. Not only did this grant help secure job opportunities as well as improve the mental and physical health for people of all ages in Barrie, but also has led to a personal best for the team. The Barrie Trojan swim team had five swimmers participate in the 2023 Bell Canadian Swimming Trials at the Toronto Pan Am Sports Centre, which set an impressive record for the club. The Barrie Trojan Swim Club athletes did fantastic as a result of their performance. Two of their swimmers and head coach have been named to represent Canada at the upcoming international events. Leila Orvaski has been named to the Pan American Games team that will compete in Chile in October. Jordi Belchez and Andy Babby, head coach, will be part of the Canadian team competing at the World Aquatics Junior Swimming Championships taking place in Israel this September. I want to congratulate them on their grit, their stamina, and wish Layla, Coach Jordy, and Andy the best of luck as they take on the global stage. Through your sportsmanship, you inspire a whole community and a generation of future athletes in swimming. Keep swimming, Barry Trojans. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I believe that concludes our members' statements for this morning.